Hey, this is Todd. I'm here with a, I promise, a really quick video. I'm working on some longer stuff, but I wanted to talk to you. In the meantime, something came up on Facebook that got my, my brain flowing, so I thought, well, let me sit down, recording on my phone, so I apologize for any quality loss. I didn't, I don't have time and the space to get all my other stuff ready, but I, I just wanted to be quick, so here we go. A GM posted on one of the Facebook D&D groups about a situation that came up with a player in their party. In this case, the player got upset because a plan of theirs didn't work out as planned. And the GM was wondering, did I do something wrong? Did the player overreact? You know, as people often do, they post, they're looking for either, you know, confirmation that they did everything correctly or, you know, criticism if they did something wrong or advice. And this guy was asking, this person was asking, this is what happened. This player kind of got really upset about it and so upset in fact that they quit the campaign. They wanted to know, hey, did, did I do the right thing? And it got me to thinking about process. If you've watched any of my hex crawling videos and if you're watching this you probably have. If not, check them out. I think they're I think they're good. There's a lot in there about developing processes to use. And one of the things I talk about over and over again is by having a process, one it takes the pressure off of you to just be the arbiter of the rules. You don't have to concern yourself with taking responsibility for things happening because you've used processes that have basically computed a result for you. If you're rolling for random encounters and you get one, suddenly it's not the onus isn't on you for putting the party in a an encounter it's hey this is this is the process we have that we all understand came up with a random encounter that's hey that's the way the dice falls play on all right having the process helps you establish that develop that and i think once you have those processes and your party and their players your table's aware of them everybody understands that when they hear that die rolling or they see it depending if you're rolling on the open or if they see it on the table or they see it on roll 20 uh-oh it rolled a one in six. We know that's an encounter. It's nobody's fault. That's just how it is. And we all understand that. And I think it changes the way we approach when we get results that we don't like, knowing that it came from, in a sense, an objective place. This wasn't the GM choosing to do it. The GM's just following the rules, right? You're following the rules of Monopoly. You land on Park Place or Boardwalk. That's the breaks. In this case, According to this DM story, I, I know he, I think he was playing a an official adventure, but I can't remember which, which one it was. The the crux of it is that the party went into a dragon's lair. They messed around a bit. They came upon a party of kobolds. They fought the kobolds, incapacitated them, didn't kill them, tied them up again, and then left them in a knock, knocked out, incapacitated state, tied up. They left to take a short rest, and they had some plan about they were going to come back in after their short rest. I think they were either going to use the use those kobolds somehow to get some advantage on the dragon. They had a plan that had to do with those kobolds and using them for their advantage. Well, during their rest period, the GM determined that the kobolds woke up, got themselves untied, went to warn the dragon, and the dragon set up an ambush. And luckily for the party, the party sent down one of, an invisible familiar, an imp or something, down there to scout ahead when they were going to return, and they they saw that this plans had changed, that the kobolds had escaped and had this, the dragon was aware of them and ready for them. So that was the situation from front to begin, front to end, and front to end, start to end. Well, a player got upset with this, that the GM had undermined or undone their, their plans. They had this great plan they were going to do, and the GM didn't undermine it. And the GM, you know, in his defense or their defense, thought that they were doing the right thing, right? Oh, they, they left for a while, and they, what, what are the kobolds going to do? The dragon's smart, and he put all, all of it together, and, and he came to what he thought was a logical conclusion. And look, I agree with him. It is a very logical conclusion. The problem is, potentially, maybe, I don't know, I wasn't there, and they didn't speak about it, is that the process from which they got from kobolds incapacitated and tied up to dragon planning an ambush was very opaque. Not that the party has to be aware of everything that's happening, but I guess this is a, a, a this is a good lesson or a good learning tool to understand the concept of showing your work much like you would you know you're in a, you're in your math class in high school junior high wherever and the, and you may know the answer to this but the teacher wants to see how you got to that answer and i think by the same token the party the players will often want to know how you got from a to b not just that you did it how did you get there so what i might do if i was running that campaign and the party goes in and i'm listening to them i'm hearing them plan and they're talking and they're doing stuff and i'm sure there was a lot of discussion about what do we do with the kobolds should we just slit their throats should we do whatever let's tie them up we're gonna knock them out they're all knocked out we're gonna tie them up we're gonna do all this now i as the gm i hear all this and i may say to them okay you're going for a long rest a long rest is at least an hour and i'm gonna i'm gonna think that it's reasonable to me that every 15 minutes they're gonna have a chance to wake up i'll say one in a quarter chance 25 percent chance every 15 minutes that they will get up you know they'll wake up and they'll and once some of them wake up you have enough kobolds i don't know how many are in this 
four are there, but if there's more than a few, they're going to, you know, get back to back, whatever. It'll be pretty elementary for them to get out of their bonds, unless the party went to some really crazy extremes in the way they tied them up. Generally, if a couple of them wake up five minutes or so later, they're going to be undone. So I'll say, look, you're free to go out for a rest. They're definitely knocked out. They're definitely unconscious, but understand every 15 minutes while you're gone, I'm going to roll the dice. And if you're taking a short rest, which is an hour, you're going to hear me roll the dice four times. If I roll a one on a D4, that means they've woken up. Obviously, you won't know that they have unless you're monitoring them in some way. But if they do, then they're going to do things. Do you still want to take a short rest? This is what's happened. From this point, everybody knows, everybody's on the same page. I haven't told them whether the kobolds are going to wake up or not. But the idea is now the players have in their mind the possibilities. Okay, they might wake up. They might wake up as soon as 15 minutes, which would be way before a long rest, which would give them a lot of time to prep or they might wake up just a couple minutes before we get there we don't know we're taking chances but we understand the chances that we're taking when it's an opaque situation you may not understand the chances that you're taking you may not understand the risks and so when the gm plays upon those risks and say aha you left them alone and they came out and they did all this stuff and now i flipped the table on you it can seem unfair it can seem that your plans have been frustrated it can seem like well how did they go from being knocked out and all tied up in a room so now they're ready for an ambush. You didn't show your work. You didn't show your process. Now, maybe as the GM, you, you went through everything and you rolled dice behind the screen and you decide, okay, it's going to take them. They get knocked out. We'll say that's 10 minutes before they get woken up and it's another five minutes to do this and whatever to this. But the players don't see it. And when they don't see it, that can be a problem. And this comes, you know, there's an intersection of a lot of stuff here. There's trust issues. Do they trust the GM that even if they don't know your process that you have one? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Do they feel like you're the kind of GM that wants to, in the name of cool or tension or whatever, will take their plans and flip them because you think it's the right thing to do. And for them, they see it as you just undoing their plans for no reason. There's a lot of things going on here, but the more you make your process from getting to whatever decisions you're making to the outcome or how you're arriving at those decisions, everybody will be on the same page. And if somebody has a problem like the player does, they can bring it to you and say, hey, wait a minute. I think if we knock them out, they should at least, at least be out half an hour. And then you say, well, I don't know. A half an hour seems awfully long, you know, but you come to that consensus and that's what you want. You want everybody to at least be on the same page. Maybe, maybe they won't like it. Maybe that same player doesn't really like that you said 15 minutes and not half an hour or not the full hour but at least they know it. And then they can say, okay, since they're only going to be out for 15 minutes, that's not enough time. Now we got to change plans, but they're aware of it. So that's what I wanted to mention just as a DM tip, please show your, show your work, show your, make your process as transparent as possible. Not the outcomes, not what the results are, but how you're getting to your conclusions, how you're getting from whatever the situation is starting to through the, you know, meta mechanics to the end. That way your party can really act with all the knowledge and all the options in their brain and they can really calculate their probabilities and have a real chance of success. I think it only can be helpful. Whereas when you keep it opaque, yeah, some, some players don't mind, some parties not going to mind, but you might run into that trouble where someone's going to disagree with those processes and they're going to feel frustrated or angry about it. And in this case, it caused someone to leave the game. We don't want anyone to leave the game. You never know how somebody's going to take a situation like this so avoid it when you can and you can easily avoid it by being transparent in your processes so gms show your work game on talk to you later Thanks.